So this is a, a proposed new bus route. Uh, routes. That's routes that the uh, city of Winnipeg is, uh, I guess, trying to implement or is suggesting to implement. It's or... uh, suggesting, it's still in the conceptual phase. Uh, so they're doing their transit master plan right now. And with that, they have a whole bunch of uh, new routes proposed. Uh, the the crux of the idea is to curate a frequent service grid type network for transit. So instead of having buses going along these windy paths once an hour or so, you have uh, buses like the 16 or other ones going through major destinations every 5 to 15 minutes. So that's the principle. And then you'll have feeder routes that are a bit less frequent but can help you get to the frequent uh, core of the network. At the same time, the city of Winnipeg and this is a lot more concrete and a lot less conceptual, has a plan for rerouting the southwest uh, section of the city. Some of that is related to the bus rapid transit system that's going to be going there, but also with some of the connector buses. And they're hoping to make these changes for the southwest section as soon as potentially 2020. So that could be big. But... Um, the frequent uh, service uh, uh, master plan is changing a lot more than that, but the city is still getting uh, consultations uh, from people on this uh, master plan. Uh, but I've been hearing a, a lot of a lot about it because I know some people uh, in Wolseley who are a bit concerned about some of the potential route changes. And again, all of this is flexible. Okay, so like Wolseley, what, so what, what's their concern in Wolseley? Uh, uh, those, not all of Wolseley. Two people I know in Wolseley, maybe more. So uh, for there's, those that don't know, Wolseley is an area in Winnipeg that yep. is, uh, uh, I would say it's a, a left-leaning area that sort of... Um, yeah, left-leaning, middle-class, it's, it's, environmentalist Yeah, they're, they're, they, they, they seem to be more on top of, uh, like... Uh, you know, if I were to say where most of the vegans live in Man in Winnipeg, I would have to say Wolseley would be my first choice of the area of where vegans might live. I don't know if that's the truth, but I I I, I, I think I would, it would at least be in the top it would three neighborhoods. I think, I think that would be yes. Anyway, so what what's the concern with that? Like I'm a little I'm a little confused as why they would have an issue of transit as because I, I, I feel like so transit would be good for the environment instead of yeah yes vehicles. yes and and I really don't want to fixate too too much on it's two people in Wolseley but it's representative of a, I think a broader challenge whenever you try to change uh to change the bus system around some rational principle like frequent service is that you always have winners and losers. And Winnipeg Transit has put out this proposed map uh, where they have some of their frequent uh, routes that are supposed to come every 5 to 15 minutes. And then they have feeder routes which supply those routes. And uh, the big one thing is Wolseley is a neighborhood that goes mostly along uh, a river west to uh, east. And it used to have a bus, the route, or it still does. This plan hasn't taken into effect yet. 
uh, that went right across it west to east. It went right through Wolseley, right through all the lovely little shops and restaurants, uh, right into West Broadway, and then, which is the neighborhood right next to Wolseley, and then went downtown and then into some other neighborhoods. Under this current ma master plan, that route isn't is it doesn't exist anymore, and there's not one that replaces it. So I know a few people who are upset about that, about that proposed change. The good news for them is that while the city of Winnipeg has a lot of good data on the frequent routes, the major, the routes that go to major destinations, uh, that they're and these are proposed routes that they have uh, to more rationally serve the city. None of this has been implemented. It's probably going to be a number of years until this becomes a reality in Winnipeg. But uh, the city has good data for these high-frequency routes, less so for the feeder routes. So, they're, so they are going to be relying a lot on public input for them. And so there is... Uh, certainly the possibility that they're going to be tweaking the designs of the feeder routes. I think that the overall idea of uh, this frequent service network that the city has proposed is good. Having major routes where, where everything, where a bus comes every 5 to 15 minutes, I think that is important for getting transit to be more reliable for people. So that you miss one bus and you're not waiting for an hour. Uh, but it is going to be complicated on how to actually do all the feeder routes so that it works. And there is going to be a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears put into this process. But I think uh, transit is one of the uh, cent central things for the city to get right. I think as a society, we have to be moving in a direction away from being so overly reliant on single occupancy vehicles. Uh, we need to reduce our oil consumption. Transit is one way to do that. And oil prices will probably continue to rise, even if we don't do the good climate things that we have to. So... Again, it's something that's happening in the city, something mm -hmm. that I... So, do you see any cons to this? Like, obviously well, Winnipeg is, it's long overdue for something like this. Like, it's, and maybe that's the biggest con, is that they're proposing quite a bit of changes to something that is a sprawling city. And to be honest, a lot of people that don't have to take a bus don't take a bus it's 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 not convenient at all i think the one con is the one we already discussed which whenever you reroute a system like transit there are going to be losers uh what about money money yes uh you need proper funding it it will take proper funding to do a frequent service network but I think, I think I see the pluses as pretty big, and we are a sprawling city uh, at the moment, but with a good transit network, we can begin moving in a direction towards being a more compact city, a city where it's easier... Uh, to do things as a household with one car or maybe so even just this, a car share. Would you say that this plan is integral to get, say, more people downtown? Because that's always been an issue in uh, Winnipeg. Uh, for those that don't know, Winnipeg downtown is notoriously undesirable. Uh, people usually tend to not go there unless they work there and as soon as like five o'clock hits it's a it's a ghost town unless the winnipeg jets or some kind of concert is playing yeah. because the arena is downtown yeah there there are parts 
of that that are changing. So the exchange district downtown sort of uh, draws uh, a lot of what I'd call the bourgeois bohemian set. But but well, yes, it, it it still is. If you ask the average uh, uh, guy in uh, Linden Woods or one of the other suburbs in Winnipeg. Uh, what do you think of downtown? You'll probably get a negative reaction. Yeah. You know, it's not like like the other big cities where downtown is a desirable place. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how you get, oh, change that perception. And maybe you do need the, what do you, do you call them? The bohemian. The bourgeois bohemian. Bourgeois. Maybe you need those people to you know start populating the downtown so it does get to be more desirable i i think a a frequent service network could be a good component to increasing the desirability of downtown i mean downtown is sort of already the center for a lot of uh transit activities I think there's probably some other things that have to change with downtown. We need a lot less surface parking lots there. I think that sort of has a bad impact on the livability. Uh, we have the giant tagger as a grocer, but we we probably need another grocer downtown. Uh, I so think you need more people living downtown. Like if there's more activity at all all hours of the day instead of just a couple of bars here and there. Um, I think that's what you what you need more coffee shops, more, you know, like uh, just things that are, you know, like that you take in the su suburbs, like the coffee shop, like the Starbucks where it's open late and, you know, you got your places to hang out and, and, and little, but I think people living downtown is more, you need more people living there and just staying there instead of just coming for work, you know, Monday to Friday to five o'clock and then you're, you're, you're out of there. Right. Yep. That, that is something, something that we need. Uh, this transit plan might be, or ensuring the frequency of transit, especially after work hours, could be a part of that. Mm. Uh, but obviously it's a big issue and it's been something the city has been trying to address for her a decade or so. And to be fair, it has been moving a bit in a positive direction. There has been some population growth since the start of the decade downtown. But mm. but yeah, not, not a uh, set and done issue and certainly our downtown isn't anything uh, like Vancouver's in terms of desirability. I think we, the bus buses should also run past one o'clock in the morning. Yes, I you know I feel like a big part of of uh, using transit for people is you know uh, a sober driver, and a lot of the bars, the popular bars, are downtown, and the bars don't close until two three o'clock in the morning. Yet the bus transit stops working at one o'clock. And so, you know, if you're drunk and you're having a good time, you're not leaving, you're not leaving the bar at one o'clock to catch your last bus home. You know, um, I think you'd, I think it would be better for everybody that if the transit would stay, uh, you know, whether it be 24 hours, maybe not. Uh, I don't know if the city has that, that many you know, a need for a 24-hour bus, but until at least 3 o'clock in the morning, I, I feel. 